Hello everyone and welcome back to another Scrap Mechanic video. Once again got something absolutely amazing to share with you. I've spent the last couple of days doing some live streaming and we've successfully built a hover ship. <laughs> this thing is absolutely crazy. I love it. It's definitely got some flaws. I'm also not the best pilot for this thing but it kind of is a hover ship that you can fly in all sorts of directions and I know you want to see it in action. We will get to that. In this video I'm going to show you it you know, being flown and then I'm going to explain uh, the controls for how it works and explain the gyroscope in the middle and a few other things to do with building this. So you're going to see some flight and then you're going to learn all about this thing. Now as we jump into the middle here I do just want to have a quick look around. You can see some of the things that are going on and I want to show you all of the connections as well because there are loads of them going all over the place and it looks like absolute madness which is really cool. <laughs> so let's jump into this thing which we have to do after we've removed the lift from down below and it's going to take off straight away because it is a hover ship and guess what it's going to do? It's just going to hover off of the ground. Of course it would. It's a hover ship and this thing is seriously cool. Now we've got a whole bunch of controls to uh, to do this with. We can go forward. There you go. We can go backwards as well. You can see the thrusters on top sorting us out there. We can also go left and right. Now this tilts the ship slightly which is one of the things that I hadn't thought about too much. You can see the gyroscope in the middle there uh, sort of tilts as well. It's extremely cool. <laughs> we can go in all sorts of directions. Now if we want to go up, I've got a button at the front to the right of me. If I press 1 that means we're just going to continually drift upwards. So while we're going upwards I'll also show you a couple of the other controls. Uh, we can spin this thing to the side as well and you can see it gets a little bit unstable when we do this and maybe I haven't engineered this in the best way possible but I'm very proud of this because I don't know what on earth I'm doing I'm just like you know brainstorming discussing stuff in the stream chats and trying to figure this all out and we've actually made something that pretty much works and we're gonna go off in that direction over there because I have a lot of trouble when I fly into the trees as you can imagine this thing doesn't really like trees too much so we've almost turned this thing the whole way around and I'm going to press 1 now and we're going to start to drift back down to the ground. Now we've got to be careful when we do that because as we drift down we're going to gain like momentum, we're going to move to the ground faster and we'll actually hit it because our, um, our hovering system won't kick in quick enough. So we're drifting back at the moment, we're going to correct that by trying to move forward. There we go. And we're also drifting to the left a little bit, let's correct that by moving right and now let's try and head forward. And I think I need to kick our thrusters back in again. There we go. And off we go. Now we're going to drift in that direction over there. Off into the distance. Crazy, crazy stuff. As you can see though, it's very slow and bulky, you know. This is my first hover ship that I've built. I've had a tremendous time uh, working with this thing. But, you know, it's, it's not going to be perfect, is it? And it is just so much fun to fly. <laughs> it really is. Okay, we're going to attempt to land this thing, and it could be quite awkward. We need a little bit of upwards thrust here as we come in, and now we're going to turn all the engines off one by one. Nice! Not the smoothest of landings, but we have successfully flown from all the way over there to here in the hover ship, and I love it. It is so much fun. That was an incredible flight. <laughs> oh, this thing is really amazing. I love it. So we've seen the flight, that was fantastic and now I want to show you the controls over here as to how this thing works. And this little setup here was actually like a little mock-up to keep all the ideas that we had in mind for how to control this ship. We wanted to make it nice and versatile, easy to move around and we managed to do that. So if we sit in the driver's seat here, um, you can see there's a whole bunch of thrusters to the right of us. These are sort of like the thrusters that are on the ship, they're just not in the... They're not in any important position, they're just here as a demonstration. So if we steer left and right, we're controlling a bearing at the front. Let's zoom in a little bit. Um, you can see left like that and, and right like that. So if we look over here, we're pushing on the left to move to the right hand side and vice versa. And so to go backwards and forwards, we're actually controlling an engine. So the contraption behind us is slightly different. So when I press forward, you can see the thruster at the back is going to activate, which will push us forward. And when I press back, it's going to be the opposite way around. Now we can also turn the ship from side to side and that's done using these ones 
and these buttons right here. So if we press 2, we can steer to the left. So that's going to sort of push us this way. So we're slowly going to turn like so. And 3 would turn us to the right, like around in this way. As you saw in the flight that I did, we rotated the ship around because it's facing that way. And then we headed off to the landing pad over there, which was a lot of fun. Now we can also press 1 to go upwards as well. As you can see there, it's a button. On the ship over here, it's actually a switch, which we'll come to in a little while. Now, another important thing about this contraption is that we have a sensor that's going to activate thrusters when we get too close to the ground. So uh, imagine that that's the ground right there. You know, we're too close to it, so it's going to start pushing upwards. Then when we're further away, it's going to turn the thruster off again. So that's how this thing hovers, and it does an extremely good job at doing just that. So now we're going to take a closer look at the ship and there is really just a lot of stuff to explain here so I'm probably going to refer to a couple of other videos as well. If you saw the UFO one that I did last time we have the gyroscope here and this is an even bigger one. This is actually a copy of Snow Crash's tutorial. If you want to know how to build one of these there will be a link to his tutorial in the description box. What this thing does is it stabilizes the ship and I'd love to actually show you that in action which I think we can do um, if I'm quick with this. So if we take off the lift, jump in there, uh, no I want to stay in there actually, and then press 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. I didn't actually need to press 4, did I? Uh, now this thing is resting down on the ground. So what's going to happen is we're going to tip one side up and the gyroscope is going to try to correct the ship, which it won't be able to do. Um, so let's hop up here and Let's turn around there. Oh, I think I didn't do it quite enough. Let's go a little bit higher. There you go. So this sensor has now been activated by this thing because it stays like level with the floor. And that has now activated the two thrusters behind it because it's trying to push up and even it out. And that works when you're, you're flying around. So that's an explanation of the uh, gyroscope right there. Let's remove that lift and let's put this thing back on the ground so it's not making loads of noise while we have a look around. So if you're interested in that thing, it's great for making something that needs stabilizing. You know, when you start to tilt, this thing will be able to correct it. So we have the sensors for that and they're hooked up to these thrusters. We've got two there, two there, and basically the ones that stick out on the side like that. Therefore, the gyroscope. Now, where do we look at next? Um, let's start off with this thing right here. This thing is for the sensors underneath that detect when you're approaching something. Um, so this is basically like a, a multiple in input connector. And this will actually make more sense once again if I were to disconnect the, uh, the lift, which I don't actually want to do. <laughs> and now we're outside again. Basically, there's sensors under all of these different bits. So as we start to approach something, um, this thing will get activated and then all the thrusters that are hooked up to the multiple input connector are going to then activate. So bear with me here. Each of these, there's nine of them in total, are all going to each of those connectors as you can see. They sort of spread out to each of the sensors. So whenever one of them activates, they're going to turn the controller in the middle which controls itself or the bearing it's attached to, they're going to turn it downwards and it's going to activate the sensor at the back. And that is then going to go to one thruster in each group of nine here. Now the other ones in these groups are what are always turned on and they've been configured with an inverter over here. So there is like a little, actually I could show you over here. This little setup is going to invert um, the input. So it means that by default, although these buttons are off, when we turn them on, they're going to turn off the thrusters. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, so they're always on, they're always like firing down, and that means it's, it's just enough weight so it slowly drifts downwards, and then when we get close enough to the ground, those sensors will fire the extra thrusters, and we slowly drift upwards. That's how it works. So the other things to show you are the ones on the outside. These are the ones that are going to turn the ship, like I showed you earlier. Uh, they are simply hooked up to the buttons at the front, so that's all very simple. Then we also have this right here. Now on the left and the right, what we're looking at are the um, the things in front and behind the driver's seat that I showed you a moment ago. So if we are to steer left and right, which I don't think we can do when the lift is attached. No, it doesn't do anything. But left and right will basically um, activate you know, these ones down here and backwards and forwards will do those ones. So if we look to where they're hooked up to, can you see how this goes off in four directions? So does that one, 
so does that one there and that one. They're basically going to each corner and they're all activating one of these four on top. So if we stand up here and have a look, you can see, um, you know, that one over there is for when we want to turn right. And so if we look at the opposite one for when we want to turn left, or sorry, not turn left, but strafe left, that's coming over to this side. And it's basically the same thing on each corner. And that's pretty much most of what there is to see right here, isn't it? Um, so there you go. <laughs> All right, the next thing to explain is about weight distribution and a little bit about the building process. So we spent a lot of time sort of going back and forth and tweaking and changing things. But once we sort of attached all of the thrusters for maneuvering, then we had to do some weight balancing. Now, if I leave this thing here unattended, it will start to just drift off in a direction. And I could probably fine tune that if I just hold my crosser, uh, cross crosshairs, I was trying to say crosshairs, which doesn't make any sense, <laughs> crosshairs right here, you'll see it's slowly drifting to the left. Now that will exaggerate over time, and sometimes it can shift to the left a little bit, and then shift back in the other direction. That's just the way it goes, and this is because of weight distribution. So after we added in all the things that we need essentially, we started to add more weight to this thing to keep it balanced, and you should never jump on the gyroscope. <laughs> um, so there's a bunch of like metal, heavy metal in the in the background over here in the, in the back part of the ship and that's just like distributing the weight load now some people have suggested all sorts of different things when it comes to balancing the weight like why don't you add more thrusters at the front instead of adding more weight at the back now if you do that you've got uneven thrust force at the front and then that means it will just push back the other way you know it's all do you know, I'm finding it hard to justify myself here, but basically I've gone through a lot of thinking about how to do this and I've made a lot of decisions and there's a lot of reasons for why. So if you're looking at this and you're thinking maybe, you know, you should have done it another way, feel free to try doing it another way. I'm not saying I'm right. I've just, I've gone through the process of making decisions and the end result has been pretty good because of that. So I think weight distribution works because you get to balance the hovering um, as well as where the weight is. Now if I were to take all of this weight off and add more thrusters, this thing isn't going to hover, it's just going to go flying up into the sky. So it's all a balancing act. If you want to do something like this yourself, then it's a lot of trial and error. We had to constantly um, pick this thing up, watch where it drifted to, then you know throw down a few metal beams on the back and then put it back down again. And eventually we got to this really good place where it drifted real nice. And there's a whole bunch of other things that I've had suggested while building this as well. Why don't you do this different? Why don't you do that different? And you know what? Right now I can't really think of too many of them. I just want to fly this thing. Let's go up into the sky. I'm going to press number one. And I think for the end of this video we should definitely have a little bit more fun flying this thing. I want to get a little bit reckless now because it's really funny watching this thing crash. So we're going to... Let's see. We're going to spin this way and we're also going to... Let's see. Let's go forwards. Bam, <laughs> and we're just going to spin off over in this direction. If we can get enough height and dodge that tree, this might be quite interesting. Looks like we're going to crash into one. Nope, we spectacularly managed to get around it. And wow, the gyroscope there is going absolutely nuts, isn't it? <laughs> and look at this, you know, it's real easy to crash if you don't drive it very well. That first flight took a lot of care, and now we're just spinning around the tree. It's quite amazing, isn't it? Uh, how can we correct this situation? I'm not sure. Maybe if I can turn off the right set of thrusters, we can stabilize a little bit and level ourselves down. And now let's try and spin in the other direction using our other set of thrusters and get away from the tree. No, I think we're caught on a branch. Yeah, let's 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 crash land. <laughs> we're going to drop down now, drop down to the ground. <laughs> Oh, very good stuff. Another thing to mention, you have to take off of a level surface because if I were to plop this thing down on the ground over here, the gyroscope um, wouldn't be level when we take off, which is unfortunate. And and there you go. That is the hover ship, I guess. <laughs> I've had so much fun making this thing. So I feel like I could chat on about this thing forever, but it's been a really great project. And if you've enjoyed it, please do leave a like. I'm going to be doing some more projects uh, hopefully more epic than this one if I can think of something. This has been pretty spectacular. Um, if you want to see more of the stuff I'm going to do in Scrap Mechanic then consider subscribing because I'll be doing more Scrap Mechanic videos and I've already done some already so check out the playlist link in the description box if you're looking for more Scrap Mechanic stuff. Anyway that's it from me this video. As always thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you next time. Bye bye.